uh, of how they've been wronged in those nations. And I felt the pain of friends of mine. And I just want to ask if we could lift up our voices. Is that okay, Pastor? If we could lift up our voices right now before the throne of God, where the presence of the Lord is in this place, and it's a sweet thing, and don't let it stop. Don't let it end. But right now, if you could lift up our voices before the throne of God, let's go before the throne of God right now and tell him, Jesus, we come before you right now, God. God, and we repent. We repent, God, of the sins of our fathers, the sins of our ancestors, Lord. We repent, God, of how these people have been cheated out of money. God, how they've been cheated out of lands that they've been put upon that had oil on them, God. They've been put off of those lands. They've been cheated out of it. We've stolen from them, God. We've taken from them, God. We've taken their land. We've taken, God, the livelihood of their land and the well-being of the land. But Lord, right now, we remember that thing that has been done. God, we don't make excuses for it, God. We call it what it is, Lord. It's sin and it's a blight on our nation, God. We repent for it right now and we ask that the blood of Jesus wash it from us. These are stains, God, just like the stains of the aborted children. And we need, God, our hands to be washed of these stains. And so, Lord, right now, we repent of it in Jesus' name. We ask, God, that you would forgive these sins and that you would restore, God, the Indian nations, that you would restore them to their places and their callings. God, you had called the white man here to be the missionaries to the Indian people so that they could know you, Jesus. And instead, God, they were wiped out. God, we pray that you would help them to arise, O oh Lord. Those that remain, God, you would strengthen them in Jesus' name. That you would pour out your fire upon the Indian nations across North America and Central America and South America. And that you would bring a healing, God. God, where there's addictions and where there's hopelessness. That you would heal and you would bind up their wounds. That they would not be consumed that you could still accomplish your purposes through these people. And we bless your name, God, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And I wanna, I wanna pray of your brother. And all I wanna ask is, is Reggie up there? Reggie was here. Where's Reggie? Is she up there? Where's Reggie? Come up, Reggie. And I'll ask, is there anybody else here that that's your heritage? It's a heritage. You understand what I'm saying? It's a heritage. It's something to be proud of. And you hold your head high. Praise God, hallelujah. Oh, I'm Puerto Rican and we have blacks and Spaniards, oh, and Taino Indians. <laughs> and there's no trace of the Taino in us anymore. My dear blood cries mercy. <laughs> the blood cries mercy. <laughs> And his pastor was giving all tongues earlier in the worship. I received some tongues that I wasn't familiar with. And I got the interpretation of the pastor. Tongues. Oof. Oof. It said, I, the Lord, this day am resurrecting. Oof. The dry bones of my indigenous people. Oh, the cry of the heart oh, is to be avenged. But I have given them my son and his blood, and his blood cries mercy. I will break stony hearts and make them hearts of flesh 
filled with love and forgiveness, they will have a new countenance and it will be, it will not be pride of your own tribe, but I will pour out my spirit upon them, a spirit of sonship. I am the chief of all the Indian tribes. I have sent you to be the peacemakers. I have sent you to be the peacemakers and to tell them of my love. Oof, oof, oof. And to be restorers of life, givers of life, speak life over my people. Oh, for they truly live in brotherhood, saith the Lord. But now they shall live as sons of the living God. And as sons of the living God, they will soar higher with wings of eagles, with wings of eagles, with wings of eagles. Praise the Lord. I'm going to speak for um, my story represents a lot of people. I look more like my Irish mother, but if my sister, my actual sister was with me tonight, she looks a lot more like this lady right here, my actual sister. But um, I look more like my Irish mother, but I'm a registered Indian. I'm, I'm, my father was, lived on a reservation when he was little, and my father was a very angry man. He grew up with a lot of anger. And it's interesting that you'd mentioned boundaries because I did my, grandmother, my Indian grandmother's funeral just a few years ago. And uh, she um, uh, had been promised payment for the land that had been taken from them for all of her life. In fact, when my daddy was a little boy, the government kept promising, we're going to pay you for the land we took away from you. And uh, my grandmother's check came in the mail the day she died, and she never saw her check. And uh, she was 93 years of age. And um, you talked about the boundaries. They, they took them first to Kansas City, and that's, it's called Wyandotte County there. I'm Wyandotte. And then they marched to Oklahoma, and they shot my grandfather when they were marching. Not, excuse me, my great-grandfather, my grandmother's daddy, when they were marching. Them. And my daddy grew up with a lot of anger. And uh, it, I think it came down from all the bitterness of all those different things. And, and, we're, and I'm not blaming society for things my dad did wrong. I did my dad's funeral too, my Indian father's funeral. We wrapped him in an Indian blanket when we buried him. And, um, uh, but he was an angry man. In fact, I was only three years old when he and I, I was the oldest, I was the only one in the room when uh, he in a fit of rage, he didn't intend to do it. I know he didn't intend to do it, but his anger caused him to take the life of my baby sister. And I witnessed that, and then I wished, witnessed a lot of other things, a lot of bloodshed and a lot of things in my years growing up. And, you know, a lot of the Indians became very passive and became alcoholics and did a lot of grieving like that. Some became more violent, some became more passive. But there's a tremendous amount of woundedness out there that's in a lot of our past. And, of course, with me, you know, I've got both, my Irish mother and my Indian father. But I think I speak for a lot of Indian people tonight. And um, it was painful to know that they took land away and kept promising to pay. And I loved my Indian grandmother. In fact, she loved the Lord. And I was preaching a convention not long before she died and she came to the service. And I was so honored to get to have my, at that time, 92-year-old Indian grandmother stand up. But it was really a painful thing for me that they never paid her so that she knew she got paid. Her check was in the mailbox the day that she died. So just speaking for the people in my category, you know, I may have bitterness I didn't even know I had. So I may have to have some help here. I would like to forgive the presidents and the legislators 
and the military and the peoples of the United States of America for the crimes and oppression against the indigenous people, the Native Americans of this great land. I thought I saw Sonny James out here. See, Sonny, could you come up here? It just came to my mind as I saw Sonny. And Pastor, I hope this is okay. Take this a second longer. It just came to my mind as I was up here. Sonny, I, my eyes fell on you. And um, a number of years ago in Texas, Sonny voiced uh, to an Indian brother who was both very dear to both of us that uh, God had a, a, a true call on his life, and yet he was totally imprisoned and in bondage by anger and unforgiveness and hatred in his life. And um, Sonny looked at that man because there was nobody else to do it. He didn't necessarily feel like he was the right one to do it or, or something special about him, but he said to this man, he said, brother, would you forgive us for the wrong we've done to you? And um, I think it's appropriate saying that you be up here because I really feel like that uh, uh, God's doing something in the house tonight. And uh, I want to ask if you would all just extend your hands forward. Good, because I want to I pray. I want us to pray for them and just ask their forgiveness. I'll tell you the, the incident, uh, you could read the story in, the, in uh, John Dawson's book, Healing the Nation. But a young man had beat up one of my, one of my workers and I couldn't figure out why he did that. And I called him in my office and, and I said, uh, Spencer, his name was Spencer Cody. His father was an Indian chief. He's a full-blooded Kiowa Indian. And I said, Spencer, why'd you do that? I said, you must hate white men. And he said, you're right, I hate white men. He said, matter of fact, I don't like you. And I, and I just asked him, I said, why? What have I done to you? And he began to tell me the story about how when his little, when his sisters were growing up, how that uh, they used to get pulled around by the braids and made fun of and how his father went through college and couldn't even get a job because he was an Indian in Oklahoma, back in Oklahoma. And as he told the story to me, I, I just, I couldn't contain, I, it just, I started weeping for this young man. I could not believe the things he was telling me because I never even realized how much pain that they went through. And I just began to weep. And from my weeping, he saw that somebody really cared and it broke him. He just broke down, he just, started, he just started weeping and all of the bitterness and all the anger and stuff began to come out of him just because he seen that somebody really cared. And uh, anyway, that, that's the story that he's talking about. And as a result of that Indian boy, I had about five other Indians that worked with in my ministry that I discipled. And uh, I, I, do have a, I do have a heart for for uh, what's happened to the Indian people. And, and she's gonna share, is there any other Indian nations represented here? If so, please just step up here with us and we're gonna pray. Robert, yeah, brother, come on. people with Latin blood that's Indian, Latins that has Indian blood in you, needs to come also. Hallelujah. Johnny, I want you and Reggie to pray. Reggie, you go first. I just want to ask this. As Sonny and I are standing here, we just want to look at you, Reggie, and all of you that are up here representing these different Indian nations and, and tribes and people groups. And we put ourselves in the place of the bridge right now between what was wrongly done to you and your people. And we ask you right now, would you please forgive us? Would you please forgive us? We're sorry. We wish it could be undone, but it can't. But we ask now that you would please forgive us. And that by doing so, you would release us 
from anything you could hold against our people. And as well, you could release yourselves and your own people. In Jesus' name. There's one thing the Lord told me a few years ago. I used to grow very cold and callous when people would come up to me time after time after time and say, will you forgive me? And the Lord rebuked me. And he said, every time someone comes to you and they ask for forgiveness, he said, a layer is coming off. <laughs> And I long for these times when there is restoration. And I want you to forgive me for those that have come to me and I've just blown it off. And I said, Lord, that's just another person out of emotion asking for forgiveness. And I realize that the layers have to come off. In every city and every nation, it's a layering process. And it's a process. And I would like to say, Jeff and Sonny, that I bless you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As an indigenous people, as an indigenous people of this land, I give you the authority to minister in my country with all the glory and all the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a man of God, I anoint you. Jeff, as a man of God, I anoint you. And I call forth your ministry in my land to make a difference with every nation, every tribe, every people group, to go to my people, to every tribe with the gospel, They've been preached the word to, but the presence of God has not been there. And I release everyone who has a heart for the people. I release the wailing men and the wailing women who will cry for the native people. And I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bless you and I give you authority to move in this country and to move by the Spirit of God and to pray. If you truly want revival in this nation, you've got to pray for the restoration of the native people. And I speak blessing on you. I speak blessing on you. I speak in open heaven wherever you preach and teach. Every reservation that you go to, you have my blessing. I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ moves. I pray that the Holy Spirit moves. I pray that the presence of God will be wherever you set your foot. And there is a reason why each one of you is here. Go to those nations. Touch those people. Pray for them. I have absolutely no animosity whatsoever. God changed me in revival in a mighty way. He changed me, and I know that he's going to change my people. I know that there's hope. I know that there's light. And I don't understand the plan, but I do understand that my Lord Jesus Christ is raising up even this year the First Nations people. So go to the lands, I pray. Go to the lands. You know, there's, there's more to the story. Recently read a book. It was about a revival happening in Toronto in the 18, early 1800s, 1801 and 2, 3. Some Methodists took the gospel to the Mississauga Indians who lived in, in that region, in that city. And they came to Jesus, hundreds and hundreds of them. And they had a revival with signs and wonders, manifestations of the Spirit, and people were falling down and shaking and laughing and crying and being healed. It went on for 20 years. 
and it was in full stride. And then the Anglican clergy and the Presbyterian clergy from the British government, the, the new city of Toronto, came in and ordered them to stop it and said it was completely out of order and unacceptable. And so the crime was not just against a people, but it was a sin against the Holy Spirit. You know, when we're thinking about repenting for things that nations have done to one another, we need to also be thinking about what religious leaders have done to the Holy Spirit. Called him a, a demonic work. And I think we should just stand and say, oh, Holy Spirit, we're sorry for pastors and leaders and those in our ancestry who have misunderstood you and stopped a move of God that would have swept the land and healed the nation and brought your kingdom. Oh, Holy Spirit, I thank you so much that you are the author of forgiveness, but you're so sensitive and you're so gentle. Lord, I believe in part that what is happening to us in Toronto is a fulfillment of what happened there 200 years ago when you wanted to move and pour out your spirit and religious powers stopped it and put the people under guilt and fear. And we say we're sorry, Lord, and we're so sorry for any part of it that we had or our ancestors had, and we invite you to come back into our lands. Come with your graciousness, come with your power, come with your love, come with your healing. We repent before you for over the years in history, again and again and again, calling a wonderful move of the Holy Spirit, a work of the devil and a work of darkness. And we have offended your spirit of grace. But we ask you to forgive us tonight, we ask you to have mercy upon us. Would you move once again over this land? Bridge the Americas, Lord, with revival fire as only you can do. Let your mercy be abundant, Lord. Let your mercy be abundant on them. Fill these precious people with the glory that they had when they first believed, when there was an innocence upon them and they were so thankful to hear the good news of Jesus that David Brainerd and others brought to them. And you moved by your power and you moved by your spirit, oh God. Lord, light the fire again. Light the fire again. Go ahead and forgive him. Forgive every person that's ever done a, a single thing to you because you see the grace of God only flows in the river of God. Forgive and be forgiven. Lord, let it come. Let it come. I ask you to move, O oh Holy Spirit, all over this place. There's another wave of healing tonight, folks, if you want to take it. If you can wait for it, it's here. It's here. It's here. 
Lord, you resist the proud, but you give grace to the humble. And we're your people. And we accept that gift of forgiveness and that grace. We know we don't deserve it, but we take it by faith right now. We say thank you for eternal life. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for grace. I ask you to move, Lord. Let that wind blow over these people right here. If you have pain in your body, put your hand on that pain. If you have problems in your body, I want you to put your hand on that problem. Somebody's heart condition was just healed in this place. I see a valve that was leaking. You can almost hear it at times. And the Lord is fixing that valve and you're feeling strength in your body. Take it. It's a gift of God's love for you right here heart conditions in the name of Jesus being touched. Lord, I break off of them the guilt, the shame, the fear, ancestral fears and curses and sins, as well as our own stuff. I break it off them in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. A few moments ago, I felt like there was someone who was in a serious accident about 20 years ago, give or take. And you've had nothing but trouble ever since. Some, a lot of pain in your body. Serious car accident 20 years ago it was you. 18 years ago, What happened to you? What was damaged? A drunk driver hit me going across the Bay Bridge, and they had to get the jaws of life to get me out. And, and I was unconscious from Monday to Wednesday. And everything on me from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet was hurt and crushed. And I had a crushed foot, which is, it looks awful, but I can walk since this revival started. Yes, I've done real well. Did you ever think about forgiving that drunk driver? You did already, a long time ago. He owes you nothing. The grace of the Lord Jesus is sufficient. I break the shock of that accident 18 years ago. We just call her body, Lord, to divine health and that foot. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Put your hand on the problem right now. Let's believe God. I don't want you to strive. I don't want you to struggle and grit your teeth and try to believe. I want you to just make a childlike decision. Lord, I believe the word of God. Psalm 103, verse 3. He forgives all my iniquities and he heals all my diseases. A wave of love goes through this broom right now, wonderful spirit. In Jesus' precious name, I command sickness and pain and problem to come off God's people now. Loose them. Let them go. Pain coming off in Jesus' name. Fire goes through that neck right there. Somebody's inner ear was just touched right here. You'd infection, problems, damage in that inner ear. I want you to check it, test, test it. Close the good ear, listen through it. You find something's happening. Where's that person? Where are you? Just wave at me. Something's wrong with your inner ear. God is touching it. Where are you? Back here. Here. What happened, my dear? I was diagnosed with um, 
breast cancer back in 99. And in 2000, I had a lumpectomy, but this week, the, the pains are starting to come, try to come back, and uh, the regimen of medication that I was on, I got vitamin A toxemia, and, and it affected my inner ear, and they're not sure how to fix it, but it, it's like muffled, it's like there's something in there that they can't fix, and sometimes the pain shoots from here all the way up into my head. How is it now? It's fine. Is there any pain there? There's no pain. There's no pain at all. Was your hearing impaired? Yeah. It close, your, close your good ear. How's it sound? It sounds just a little hazy, but not like it was at all before. Jesus. Clear. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We take authority over the rest of it, Lord, this fear of cancer. Come out of her. Look at me. Jesus Christ is the Lord. He knows no defeat. Nothing is impossible with him. He's your healer. He's your savior. Take it. He's touching your ear. He touches the rest of you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. What's happening to you, man? Right here. Can you come out? If you can hold your heart open like a little child, God wants to break out in this place. Where are those other two that had an ear problem? What do you need God to do for you? What do you need him to do for you? What's wrong with you? There's so many things wrong with me. From what? Oh, oh, I've had excessive compulsive eating. And it's wrecking my body. And it's eating me alive. Come here. Jesus. She said she's had many conditions, and compulsive eating and some other things that are wrecking her body. Do you know when the Holy Spirit comes on a person, it's simply this, good stuff is going in and bad stuff is coming out many times. People get so freaked out because people shake and stuff and the, Often it's just demons leaving, for goodness sake. They can't stand the fire. Look up here. Take it. The fire of God burns on you. You know, I don't know at all I don't want to go into the detail but this lady's been hurt and hurt and hurt again haven't you since you were little Lord I ask you to be begin a deep work of forgiveness in her help her Lord help her to forgive the abusers and get into the river and take her inheritance in Jesus name what happened with you sir um, I've been told I have Meniere's disease what happens is I get vertigo and um, it makes me dizzy and mostly at the most inopportune times usually um, sometime when I'm at work or 
when I'm trying to minister or something like that, I get these incredible dizzy spells. It's an inner ear problem. Did you feel anything happen? I feel hot now. I mean, it's like it's like sunshine burning down the back of my neck, like Pastor was talking about this morning. It's hot in here. <laughs> I mean, I know it's the Lord, you know, and just, yeah. You know, I said to the Lord before I came to Brownsville, I got healed in 1997 down here. And I said, from rheumatoid arthritis, and I said to the Lord, when I come this time, I want to be cleansed. I don't want any more of these problems because if I'm going to do this full-time ministry thing for you, I need to be walking in divine health. I cannot afford to be messing around with doctors and all that. Ask him to increase that fire that's on you right now. Lord. Please, Lord. I take it now. By faith in you. Sha. Those of you that had pain in your body a few minutes ago, I want you to check yourself right now. It's the strangest thing, you know, the Lord can heal you and you know, you're not even aware of it. I remember Carol and I were in England and I had a word about healing for the heels of people. The devil said to me, well, that's a great word for you to get because you can't even get your own healed. You know, I'd had two or more years of just agony with them. I don't know what it was, heel spurs or something every morning and every night. I mean, I was just struggling with it trying, you know, new shoes and better this and better that. And I just told him to get lost and I gave the word anyway. Several people got healed that night of that condition and other things. I didn't realize until two weeks had gone by that my own heels had been healed. <laughs> you know, go figure. Check yourself. I want you to stand up, move, twist, turn, look for that pain. Bend those knees, somebody's knees. It's just the fire of God went through those knees right here. I want you to move, I want you to check yourself. And if you feel like something has started to give way, something is happening, I want you to wave at me right here. You feel like it's coming, it's happening here. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, what were you suffering from? My, my neck has been hurting me real tight and just really hurting me all night and for, it feels so much looser. <laughs> I had a pain in through here really that was really hurting a lot and it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. When did it go? A little while ago. <laughs> Who else was waving? Something has happened. Come here, sir. What happened with you, ma'am? Right here. Are you from Ireland? Yes. You had sciatica pain? Yes, um, all stiffness in the, in the bottom of my back and down my leg today, and it's gone totally now. Just, How long have you had that? Um, well, um, just really since yesterday, but over the years from a back injury, nursing, lifting, it troubles me from time to time. You'll have to forgive all those heavy people you had to move, you know? <laughs> Thanks, Jesus. Thanks, Jesus, for touching her. I give you praise, Lord. What happened here? Uh, I had a bad back pain from an auto accident about three and a half years ago, and my uh, leg would just go right to sleep, just standing. I couldn't even stand. I couldn't dance or anything, and I felt fire in, the, in my small of my back when you were saying about breaking accident. Uh, injuries before and it just started getting and I said oh it's going away now and then you said well check it again and then I felt like it's feels like a, a little wooden log burning <laughs> it gets bigger and it gets smaller it gets bigger but I, I couldn't do anything like this I couldn't do anything like this without having severe pain in my uh, vertebrae and, and my leg just go completely out but I couldn't stand so Praise God. It happened just now. So. You know, I want to say that people get healed because of the anointing, the presence of God in the name of Jesus. That's why it happens. It's a mystery at one level, but on the other hand, it's, it's not a mystery. You have to have God shows up and all kinds of miracles happen, you know. 
Many people, some people, lose their healing because very often there's a battle that ensues. And it confuses them. They think, well, I thought, I went to that meeting, I thought I was feeling a lot better, but now that pain is trying to come back. You know what I tell them to do? Just cling to the Word of God. He's the Lord your God who heals you. But more than that, get back under the anointing. Or should I say as well as that? Just get back under that presence. In his presence is fullness of joy. Lord, thank you for what you're doing to this man. He said there's a fire in his back, like, like a burning log. Lord, reinflate those discs, relieve the pressure in those nerves, restore the damage to that vertebrae. Give him a whole new spine back there, just for your sake. Fill him up. I just want to share with you. My wife and I are short-term missionaries, and we, she got healed of kidney cancer years ago, and we, we share, she shares a testimony, and we pray for people to be healed. And the enemies just said, how can you pray for people to be healed and you're walking in pain? And it's like the brother was saying, and I said, I don't know. It's a paradox, Lord. I believe it. And he said, like you have shared in, in, in Latin America, he says, now you need to walk it out, exactly what you said about holding on to God's word, not making believe you don't have a pain, but standing on it just like you take medicine and there's a turning point. So I just received that from you. And don't forget the anointing. <laughs> Where's that knee problem? Knee problem. You what? Sure, come on. Where's the person that had that knee condition? Come on, dear. We'll just take... Take that one as well. Come here. Tell me what happened to you. You're already under the power. <laughs> you are, aren't you? But I was just sitting there. Wasn't a thing in the world wrong with me, just praising the Lord. And all of a sudden, the pain just hit me across the bottom of my stomach. And it was just unbearable. And my daughter kept seeing you going up there. Anyway, it's gone. <laughs> you were just sitting there minding your own business? No, no, don't go away. Come back here a second. I want you to be filled with his love. Just take it. Just take it. I have a vertigo, and that also they told me that was our inner ear. In Jesus' name, Lord, it cannot stay. In Jesus' name. What happened with your knee? I was diagnosed with chrondomalacia in 1981. They told me, well. Put it in English. <laughs> what it is is your cartilage just goes away, period. And you can't walk. Your knees get real bad. Well, I rebuked that when they first told me. I said, I don't have it. But my knees were getting worse. They said by the age of 50 that I wouldn't be walking. I'm 51. Thank God. How are they now? Tonight the fire came into my hands. So I put those on my knees. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> I, I couldn't bend down and get back up without looking like, uh, oh, I'll show you. Thank you, Lord. Tonight, is there any pain there? A little bit still in this one. A little bit. Fire on that knee. I break that lie off your knees. Amen. Jesus Christ heals all your diseases. Every single one. Father, every root 
of the enemy. We just lifted off this man right here. How many think this is, this is fun? Isn't this fun? The Holy Spirit coming. Let's all stand up and give him a big shout of praise. You be the glory. You be the glory. You be the glory. Hallelujah. Well, tonight we were supposed to hear Brother Victor Richards preach the gospel. And Brother Victor, we're going to have you do that Wednesday, okay? So we're going to have him back. I wouldn't take anything, though, for the moving of the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Hadn't this been wonderful? Don't forget the service in the morning. Now, remember tomorrow, Claudio Frazen and his wife both will be here. You don't want to miss tomorrow. And if you have to take off from work, you've got my permission. With pay. With pay. Good night. <laughs>